All right, boys, now I just picked up this used laptop for 1200 bucks. And well, it's gonna be my new VR laptop. I am actually gonna keep it for myself. Look at how cool it is. But the only problem is that, well, it's full of dust. You probably can't see it, but like right here, it's really full of dust. And it makes this very annoying sound, um, again, because it's super dirty. So we're gonna just clean it up, open it up, you know, basically refurbish it, and then it's gonna be good to go. Let's get started, boys. Now, as always, the first step is gonna be cleaning it with the data back and with some tissues. So let's get started. Now, it's already looking way better. But something else which we can do is simply open it up and then use the data back directly inside. Let's go. All right, now as you can see, after opening it up, well, it's quite dirty, you know, all the fans. And of course, it might also need a um, you know, thermal paste replacement, but we're, we're gonna do that um, not right now. And now we're gonna just blow the fans off and that should be Quite a big, quite a big improvement, you know, by itself. So. Now, after the refurbishment, the laptop came out pretty well. As you can see, it's clean. The keyboard looks great, and I'm really liking it so far. But we still have a couple of problems. Now, since uh, um, this laptop is very, very, very thin, uh, unfortunately, the thermal design isn't the best. And since uh, you know, it already has a, a, a year or so of usage. Um, the thermal paste is very dry and uh, that means that, well, it's tr throttling, you know, like this i9 uh, should go up to like 4. Point, uh, you know, 4.1 all core, I guess, um, and like it should turbo up all the way to a pretty hefty 4.7, but, you know, we are running Intel burn test on standard, not even the highest difficulty and we are already hitting 100, 100 degrees. So we're gonna, you know, open it up and repaste it with liquid metal. All right, guys, now I don't generally do voiceovers, but I thought I'd give you a couple of tips when it comes to these mounting laptops, since, you know, uh, working on this one was quite of a challenge, even though in a good sense. Now, uh, I generally recommend that you are very careful and basically detach all the cables. Uh, even if you don't need to touch them, you know, like the worst thing that can happen is that you'll have to, you know, put them in place again, but this way you don't risk, you know, breaking connectors. Then you should really remove all the screws you see before applying any kind of pressure because you risk damaging something. And then generally with laptops, you want to really check um, if there are some screws behind the keyboard because oftentimes you will need to remove the keyboard before being able to dismount the laptop. Fortunately, this time it wasn't the case. Uh, yeah, by following these tips, you should be able to dismount most laptops properly. Now this laptop screw is completely stuck. Now I let you close. I let you take a closer look, but basically, um, you cannot use a, you know a screwdriver because it will simply rotate. Now what can you do if you have a laptop in which a screw is stuck? Well, you just need some pliers. Uh, sorry guys, but with the screw I have, um, it was very difficult to do it uh, uh, on the table, so I had to actually lift it off. So now I will try to finish it off on camera, but again, it's um, literally the worst case scenario, so, you know, it's not going to be the, the best footage. But you basically have to grab the screw and then rotate, and that's going to be it. Alright, I should be able to do the last part on camera. As you can see, this is the screw. Um, you just grab it with the pliers and then rotate and here it is. Now another interesting thing uh, which you know is very obvious with this laptop is the use of liquid metal. Now as you can see we are doing a simple repaste here but uh, I'm applying some nail polish you know you will see it in a footage in a couple of seconds and basically what that is doing is simply preventing the liquid metal from going over the little SMDs uh, on the CPU. As you can see, now I'm doing it. And, well, 
that will prevent uh, the laptop from breaking when I'm closing it, but also like um, in a couple years, let's say I open the laptop again, uh, this way the liquid metal won't spread on the SMDs, it, it's really crucial to do. And also, like aside from that, even though you are covering it with nail polish, you, you should still be careful while applying liquid metal, because yeah, if it goes in the wrong place, it can really damage it. But yeah, um, you know, not spoiling too much, but in a couple seconds you'll see how much it improved it, so it's definitely worth it. Alright guys, now here we are with the after results, I just applied the liquid metal and well, um, now we can successfully run the whole test and the max temp we achieve um, is 85 degrees, um, 87 sorry, which is quite nice, um, you know, 100 minus 87 we would have dropped 13 degrees but the reality is that it was thermal throttling before, so we, we probably dropped like 20, um, so that's great. And yeah, it can now, uh, you know, hold the, f the full turbo and we actually pass the whole stress test. Now we can actually um, also run a quick uh, CPU-Z benchmark and that should be quite nice too. So let me just check it out real quick. Let's go. Yes, it's really nice as you can see. Um, and this is like while having the fans um, really, really, you know, spinning low. So if I were to turn up the fans, I could probably get quite a bit more. Uh, but you know, it's already pretty impressive. Uh, we have, you know, uh, if we compare it to a Ryzen 7 3700X desktop CPU, we are just slightly losing in multi-threading applications and we are winning by, you know, quite a bit on single thread, so that's great. This is the fire strike score which we got um, after the liquid metal application, but before the overclock and the undervolt. Now, the physics is simply insane. We have a nice graphics considering that the 2070 is a max Q and the combined is pretty solid. Now let's get into the actual tuning. All right, guys, now here we are with the actual results. Now, if you take a look at the overall fire strike score, well, we have 17K, which is quite high. Now the physics is simply impressive since we have 21K and that's of course because we have an i9. But now taking a look at the graphics, that's maybe even more interesting because we are very close to 20K. Now 20K is what I used to get on my previous laptop, which had a 2070 non-max Q. And this, this is mainly thanks to the overclock, you know, we got plus 150 um, on the core and plus 700 on the memory, which is really nice actually. Now, talking about the undervolt itself, because th this is what allowed us, tank, you know, also um, I mean, this coupled with liquid metal is what allowed us um, to get this great performance on the, on the GPU because by removing, um, you know, the load when it comes, you know, thermal-wise from the CPU, we actually had more headroom on our GPU. Now here we achieved a minus 150 on the core, which is actually quite nice. And so, yeah, as you can see, undervolting can really help to increase performance even if we are talking about the graphics performance because the cooling system in a laptop is the same and well, especially if the laptop is thin as this one is, um, it really helps, you know, even after the liquid metal application. So that's basically it guys. Let me know what you think about it and yeah, see you in the next one.